There's been a lot of interest in Mars recently. So many headlines and, and I just need to make a special video about it. Also, I need to make a special video because my good friends at MOVA sent me this gorgeous Mars globe. It's solar powered. It rotates on its own. It is it, on its own. It is absolutely beautiful. And I wanted to use it to talk about Mars. So, so the thing with Mars is that like, everybody's interested in it. People are sending missions there. I mean, the whole reason that SpaceX exists is so that Elon Musk can get to Mars. The whole point of NASA's Artemis program is to get people on the moon so that we can eventually go to Mars. Like Mars is the next step. Mars is the place where we want to be. Uh, a NASA mission, NASA just sent a mission there, the Mars Perseverance lander. Uh, it is headed to the red planet. There are uh, news stories just came out recently about these subglacial lakes, like the whole water on Mars thing has been a thing for like decades now. Uh, there wasn't water and, and there are signs of past water definitely, but like not water today, maybe we're not sure. Uh, and, and the subglacial lakes are happening on the, on the South pole, which you can't see, but you can see the North pole here on this MOVA globe. And there, these are ice caps made of water ice and carbon dioxide. And we think based on radar imaging that there are lakes of liquid water, maybe some slushy, briny, grimy water, or maybe actual liquid water, uh, lakes happening underneath the ice caps. The big debate there is whether there's enough heat to actually sustain liquid water. Uh, the Mars 2020 mission that I mentioned, the Perseverance rover is going to hunt for signs of life. Uh, it's headed to a uh, Jazeera crater here, which is on the Western edge of, uh, Idiris Planitia. If I remember right, uh, it's headed to that crater because there used to be water in that region. There's evidence of water flows in that region. And so the Mars Perseverance is going to land there, look for signs of past water, geologic activity, look for signs of past life. Like it is, and we just keep sending missions there. We just keep doing it. And I don't know, like Mars is cool. Like, yeah, yeah, this, this month in October, uh, it's really easy to spot Mars in the Northern hemisphere. It's going to rise in the, the Eastern sky, uh, shortly after sunset, uh, near the beginning of October, it will track the moon for a while. And also at the end of October, it will track the moon. It is going to be like the fourth brightest object, even brighter than Ju Jupiter this month, because we're on the same side of the solar system as Mars. So it looks nice and big and bright and close. It is gorgeous on the night sky. We are sending missions there like crazy. We are obsessed with whether there was water on the red planet or not. <sighs> I'm not going to deny that Mars is cool and fascinating and interesting and worthy of a lot of study. But my question is, is Mars overrated? Is Mars overrated? Like, are we spending too much time, too much attention, too much interest in Mars? Like, yes, we're interested in the formation of the solar system. We can study comets and asteroids. Right. And that's giving us tons of information about the formation of the solar system. We're hunting for life in the solar system. I mean, chances are this thing is dead. It used to be not, not the Mova globe. It's, it's definitely alive and moving and gorgeous, but like, but the planet is dead. We, we think maybe it had life in the past, but there's potential signs of life on Venus or the atmosphere of Venus that, you know, that weird phosphine signal that we're seeing and like what the heck is generating all that phosphine on Venus. We've got the icy moons of the outer worlds like Europa, Enceladus, and more that might have liquid, vast liquid water oceans underneath their shells. So if we want to find life that's alive right now, there are a lot better bets than the red planet. We want to explore the solar system. We want to study the solar system. So why are we sending even more missions to Mars? Why are we sending rover after rover after rover, orbiter after orbiter to Mars? Why aren't we sending more missions to Venus? Why aren't we taking those missions uh, like the, the Europa Clipper mission? Why isn't that to, to explore the icy moons? 
of Jupiter. Why isn't that getting fast tracked? Like, why aren't we spending more money on that? Like, why is our priority on Mars? Is it because we want to land there? Because it's the next logical step for putting human beings somewhere. Like we already did the moon uh, and we'll do the moon again, I guess, in the Artemis project. But then we'll get to Mars again because that's like the next stop over. But it seems like, I don't know, I, I don't want to knock like Mars scientists or Mars explanation. Obviously, this is a very fascinating planet. Obviously. And obviously it's deserving of study. But but I'm I'm curious if you agree with me, if if we think, if you think we should start investing more time and effort in other explorations of the solar system, like maybe we didn't, here, here's a crazy sentence, maybe we didn't need the Mars 2020 rover. Maybe we just didn't need it. I mean, it's curiosity redux. It, it, it's it, We have already have a rover on Mars. It's already kicking. It's already doing stuff. Did we really need another one? Or could that money have been better spent like launching a probe to Venus even before all this phosphine stuff and potential life in the atmosphere? We could just send a, a mission to Venus. We could have already been there. We could already have something en route to the outer worlds, to the to the icy moons. And don't even get me started on Uranus and Neptune. We haven't explored those planets in decades. They got the Voyager mission and that was it. I don't know. I'm 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 torn because obviously Mars is interesting and it's basically right next door, but there's a lot of other interesting stuff in the solar system and I feel like I feel like our priorities aren't aligned. Like we're doing Mars because it's like the default option. We're not actually thinking creatively and taking risks and doing big things. I feel like we're doing Mars because it's the safe bet. Like, oh, we did one rover on Mars, so let's do another. And we did two rovers on Mars, so let's do a third. Like, what are we actually advancing here? What are the risks we're actually taking in science exploration, in exploration of the solar system? I don't know. That's my rant. Mars is going to be in the sky this month. Check it out. It's beautiful. Mars 2020 is headed there to J to Jezero Crater. It's going to land next year. Should we well, should we broaden our horizons a little bit more? That's all I'm asking. I do want to thank Mova Globes for sending me the, this beautiful, beautiful piece of art. Uh, you can get your own Mova Globe. I put a link down in the show description along with a little coupon code that you can use for a discount. So thank you to Mova Globe. Thank you to you um, for, for making this sh show possible. And I'm curious. I'm curious what you think. I'm putting this out there in the wild. It's up to you, space cadets to decide if if we should give up on Mars and move on to something else. It's up to you. I, I'm washing my hands of this. It's your call now. I'll see you next time.